So in this talk, we're going to combine all the things we learned uh, today. Uh, my WebAssembly has been mentioned several times uh, today. And uh, the goal of this talk is to uh, get you uh, writing WebAssembly modules tomorrow on the weekend for your projects, or maybe at work on Monday. A bit about me. I'm Vlad. I'm coming from Toronto, Canada. I'm a full stack engineer at uh, Mozilla. I, wo I work on Firefox. and uh, my day-to-day -day is, is working with JavaScript and Rust. <clears throat> so you probably already heard about WebAssembly today. Uh, it's a new low-level low bytecode for the web. It's a stack-based virtual machine, and it uh, produces these .wasm files. And uh, it's used for uh, calculations, uh, computational tasks, uh, importing low-level uh, libraries, uh, multimedia processing, uh, game development, and a lot of Bitcoin mining. <laughs> so, good thing though, it integrates well uh, with the uh, web developer uh, workflow. There's been a survey done uh, this year by usages of WebAssembly on the, uh, I think the top, top Alexa websites, and uh, the result was that uh, it's used on, for mining a lot, but also for good things like libraries, gaming, uh, and uh, other kind of custom code. Meanwhile, this morning, I, uh, nobody mentioned this, I think, in, the, in their slides, but uh, WebAssembly is now officially a web standard. So it's a huge, <laughs> yes, yeah, claps for all the developers, uh, contributors, um, browser vendors. We kind of, we made it. Now it's the fourth language that's on the web. It allows to run code uh, in the web browser. And uh, yeah, I tweeted uh, just 9 a.m. It was just like, yes, uh, you can go read the, the details. And uh, even though we just standardized it, it's, it's already here and it's ready for you to use. Uh, there's an easy way uh, to, to integrate WebAssembly in your applications. For instance, some libraries like Pika, the high quality image resizer, um, has this uh, amazing uh, way of integrating WebAssembly. Uh, all you have to do is to pass the uh, WASM <laughs> uh, string into the options. And uh, Pika is ready to uh, optimize and resize your images in your apps. Uh, with, uh, with WebAssembly. So preparing for this talk, I uh, took all the images from the .js website, 130 of them, mostly speaker faces, and uh, <laughs> resized them with JS. It took me over two seconds with Pika. Then I forced the uh, WebAssembly mode uh, on it, and uh, it took less than a second to process all those images. So very easy to use, kind of, uh, you, can, you can get on that. Uh, but we want to go uh, and uh, optimize our own applications and our projects. And uh, sometimes you get this sense uh, where maybe power users or um, some, uh, like if, if somebody's really heavily using your application, it starts to slow down. And maybe it's processing a lot of data, uh, processing images, video, and things like that. So we have this problem that it's a bit slow on the computation size. And uh, here's a quick example of, of that. <coughs> we have some application that computes things. Then there's this gear icon that starts spinning, and, uh, and then we get the output. And uh, I want to take this example, kind of my example here, to hash strings. And what I'm doing here is I'm using this 2x hash algorithm to uh, hash a string uh, 100,000 of times. And uh, th there's an implementation of it on NPM. You can download it, check it out. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to speed this up, because right now it takes around over two seconds, yeah, almost three seconds there, uh, sometimes even slower to run this hashing operation. And in your heads, I just want you to kind of think about your application when, I see, when you see the slide. Where, what's, what's the uh, kind of where is my computing uh, logic happening? Uh, what can I substitute here that's taking time? I think in Charlie's example this morning, she was doing um, uh, the, the audio processing. So we can <laughs> switch this gear and put the audio processing in the, in the, into a WebAssembly module. So <laughs> we, then we need to decide, how can we uh, what can we use to write this WebAssembly module in? And uh, in this slide, kind of, that's my order of preference here right now, which is first I'm going to go to Rust if it can do it. If not, then I will explore the assembly script, uh, see if that can do it, and maybe C, C++, C is the, is the other solution. And uh, for you, you can just visit the WebAssembly.studio today. It will give you this pop-up that will show you uh, kind of give you choices of uh, how these uh, WASM modules uh, look like uh, when you use these different technologies. Uh, so here's our goal. We're going to replace, <laughs> replace this gear icon with, uh, with a WASM module. 
And we've seen Webpack mentioned uh, at this conference uh, <laughs> a lot. So Webpack is kind of the way to, uh, oop, here we go. Let's try this again. So we have Webpack that can do this for us. There's an amazing module called Wasmpack uh, that will create a Rust crate for you and will let you optimize your, um, your application. So when we use Wasmpack, it creates a Rust crate for us, all ready to be used, and we can, uh, we can import the 2x hash uh, version, the Rust version of this algorithm into our, um, into our crate. And then a simple function to, same as JavaScript, we, in, we have an input string, and we uh, run the hasher on the string, and we output it as hex format. Uh, in this case, you'll be rewriting this, your com heavy computational logic here in Rust. Uh, and finally, in uh, Webpack, all we have to do uh, with Wasmpack, we include a plugin uh, that uh, the Wasmpack plugin over there, which will uh, build our Rust code for us. And uh, as, it's as easy as just doing a new Wasmpack plugin and uh, uh, pointing it at the direction of our Rust code. And what you'll see, uh, oh yeah, and then we can uh, import the bundle that it produces, and then we can uh, run the module functions that we wrote in Rust. So we have a 2x hash there on input, and we run it hundred thousands of times. Uh, <laughs> what I'm doing here is another kind of uh, approach that I take. When I work with these things, I uh, try to measure all this. You saw in my slide there, like I wanted to measure how long uh, uh, the, uh, the how long Pika takes to resize images, and how long it takes right now to do my computational logic, and uh, so I do performance that now on that. And my Webpack workflow here doesn't change. I still do npm start. Uh, it, this time it compiles my uh, Rust code as well, so no like additional changes to my build scripts. It does it automatically, uh, and now I can activate my WebAssembly. Uh, module, and now it takes 200 milliseconds to perform the same operation. So then I can spin on the gear. It, it's so fast I had to tweak it so it <laughs> slows down a bit so you can see the animation. The other approach here, we want to make sure we use web workers with WebAssembly. And uh, I've seen examples of this right now, creating abstractions like uh, create WASM worker, pass, it, pass the, uh, the source WASM module, and then work with it. And this sort of looks like this, where we have the web worker isolation here. And uh, the web worker uh, runs WebAssembly and um, performs the computation there. <clears throat> and it will look very similar. Now we have a worker JS file, same, uh, same code. Uh, with web workers, we have to use messaging. So I have to post message my result of my hashing uh, to the original application. And uh, this is just the simplest way to kind of trigger that. And when, I arri when the message arrives, I run the, uh, the computational logic. <clears throat> in, my in my application, I can in initialize a new worker with the worker.js file and send it some messages and say, OK, here's the string I want to hash. And uh, uh, in this case, again, I'm measuring the performance like, and to see if, if adding web workers slows down my, uh, my, my speed, the 200 milliseconds that I gained with WebAssembly. And there's some cool spinning uh, classes for, for the CSS to spin. <clears throat> if we look at Webpack, still same thing. We just tweak our configuration a bit. Uh, we now have an app configuration file. We're still reusing the same plugin, but now we have two configurations. We have uh, the application, original application, and now we have this worker. Uh, Webpack targets as the, set the target as web worker, and we reuse the same plugin, and same, nothing changes there. <clears throat> we can take a look in Firefox. Uh, I have two tabs open, one with web worker, one without. And uh, same speed, to over around, <laughs> around 200 milliseconds to measure that. <clears throat> and in Firefox DevTools, we can take a look at the, uh, the, mo the WASM module right there, loaded as, a, as part of the web worker. Uh, so why would we want to use web workers? If we compare, uh, we, we would like, we could compare the web worker versus not a web worker scenario. So I'm going to do a million hashing application uh, iterations now in both cases, in my old, uh, the original example and the web worker example. And we can run it. So this is, the first one is going to be the, the old example. And <laughs> I activate WebAssembly, compute it, and it takes a while. And I try to right click in the browser, and my browser is just locked up because it's not inside a web worker. All this computation is done on, kind of on the main thread. 
In my, in my uh, web worker example, I can right click, the browser is accessible, still uh, kind of the average is uh, for a million operations now we're at uh, two, around two seconds. <clears throat> Now, uh, I also want to talk about a bit about the uh, future of WebAssembly and where this is all going. Uh, there's a lot of kind of, Sven, uh, Sven mentioned a lot of uh, proposals and uh, support in there. Uh, another kind of initiative is uh, what's called the Bytecode Alliance. And uh, it was just announced uh, last month, so it's really, really fresh. And the Bytecode Alliance is kind of the open source community. It is dedicated to uh, create a new secure uh, software, software foundations uh, through WebAssembly. And uh, th they have several initiatives, and you can read them about more on the, on the URL there, but uh, <laughs> the ones I'm excited about are the WebAssembly system interfaces. And uh, uh, th this will allow us to run WebAssembly outside, uh, sort of beyond, beyond the web browser. And uh, so this will allow us to, for already fast languages like Rust and uh, C++, it uh, can introduce better security models for those languages. And uh, the runtimes like Python and Node.js and maybe Deno, uh, we can uh, use, uh, use the WebAssembly speed as well as the, the security improvements. And it would look something like this uh, on my slide there. The future of this is we, we start with the Rust crate that does our, for example, 2x hash computation. Later on, a Rust program can import it can import that code as a Rust crate, but it can also import that uh, a WebAssembly module uh, that uh, we, we run as part of our Rust program. And then we have kind of the top there is like Firefox loads WebAssembly. You've seen an example of that already. Uh, but for example, Python can load the same WebAssembly module and also load one from assembly script. And the Python program outputs to terminal, but also it exports to a Node.js server. And uh, <laughs> this week, there was, uh, was a post about .NET being, a, uh, being able to use and load uh, these modules as well. So you can see how flexible uh, the future can be here. <clears throat> Another, uh, besides kind of loading these, these crates, uh, these modules, the WebAssembly modules in different ways, we can also, uh, the, the Bytecode Alliance is working on a new kind of nanoprocess security model. And I think that was kind of, uh, uh, I think the, the demo talk, uh, Bert mentioned this, uh, uh, where, they had, where they have permissions for networking and kind of sandboxing things. So the nanoprocess security model uh, is basically, in, in a single slide, uh, this is what it would look like. We have a Rust crate, and it could be like 2x hash that we just, I saw you saw an example of. Export is a WebAssembly module. However, it has its own memory sandbox, and for instance, it can have in network access. Uh, for, uh, and then it can be imported in a Python program that uh, also provides a WebAssembly module, but this time, that WebAssembly module only has file system access. Uh, and uh, with JS, we can also like, sandbox memory. And, and finally, import that, uh, import that all into the Node.js process. And for instance, if I have a Node.js application and my 2x hash crate updates, and I'm just kind of doing cargo update or updating my dependencies. I don't know if like, there's going to be something malicious in there or not. In this case, I can be confident that if, if I give the 2x hash uh, a network access, um, it will kind of have it, but it won't have file system access. So, and same with the memory. If any, it, it will not corrupt my memory because it's running in its own sandbox memory uh, case. A quick demo of uh, the WebAssembly system interfaces. <clears throat> just to see this in action. We have the same code that I showed in the beginning there, the 2x hash. Nothing changes here as far, yeah, it's the same thing. We just build it a bit differently uh, with, in Webpack to make, the, to make this work in, in my uh, front-end application. I change, this, I, I change it to use the WASM interfaces types loader. Uh, at, at some point, probably in Webpack, this will go away and it will just work. Um, and my application works the same way. So I go back, and like in this case, it's, it's still fast to compute this. What I can do now is I've built this module, and for instance, for maybe your production work, you want to reuse the computation that you wrote in other ways. Uh, you want, for example, you have uh, uh, a Python notebook that needs to import the same computation and do some metrics on your code, so, uh, or, or maybe a, another Rust program. In a Rust program, we can just load the file to hash.wasm. Ooh, yeah, there we go. And uh, we can build and run the application, and it provides the hash for us. 
<laughs> in uh, was it 0 0.07 seconds. In a Python program, same thing. Just import to hash. To hash is just a WASM file that I've built, uh, just the similar way I showed you. And we can compute another thing. So now we can run this WebAssembly module in the Python context. And we just do Py the old Python uh, run.py. Same thing. Produces a hash. Now we have a different string, but very flexible for us to kind of reuse these modules. Finally, my favorite example is running this in Node.js. Uh, we import compute from to hash.wasm and compute another, another string. And we just console log it. And now we can kind of move this to hash, hashing logic that we, we used in our Webpack front-end application onto the back end. Uh, to use this right now, you need uh, Node version 12 or uh, Node version uh, 13 with some experimental flags. And uh, we run the program the same way. And it will provide us the same, the same output there. Boom, another hash. So you can see the flexibility of kind of reusing, these, reusing this code that you've uh, optimized and now have as part of your project. So just to conclude here, uh, <laughs> use WebAssembly wisely. You saw I was benchmarking kind of almost everything, adding new, uh, adding workers to, to my front-end application, um, measuring it on different inputs, and uh, <laughs> use web workers. Uh, one important thing to highlight here is that what the, the reason I'm measuring all this is because uh, WebAssembly might not always be kind of a solution for this. So if you have a large input, uh, like maybe you have a huge book that you're, you need to process, and you take this in your front-end application, and you try to process it in the WebAssembly module, all that input has to travel to the WebAssembly module and allocate memory and things like that. So it's like it, it could not be the solution. That's the reason why I, <laughs> I, I measure it. Uh, keep an eye on your output size. So there are several optimizations you can do. Uh, you, uh, some of the, there's some web, uh, Webpack plugins that let you measure like, your bundle size. And uh, uh, keep an eye on the size of the WASM modules, because the, you, you can tweak a single flag in the, kind of the, uh, the, the module uh, building step, and it will optimize your, your size of the, of the output. So it's a good one. And <laughs> research different WASM runtimes. So once you actually write your uh, first WASM crate uh, or f uh, f WASM module, try to run it in different uh, environments. Maybe run Node.js, which you can later use for testing, uh, or in Python and things like that. <laughs> and try to go beyond the web browser. Uh, it's, kinda, it's a very exciting time right now to kind of reuse this format and follow, follow the news there. Cool. And that's it for me. Thanks so much for attending this talk and all the organizers. <laughs>